What's up, welders? With the affordability and the subsequent popularity of multi-process welders, lift TIG is more popular than ever before. But how do you use it and how do you get the best results? In this video here, you're gonna find out answers to both of those questions. Lift TIG gets its name by the way you initiate the arc. The tungsten comes into contact with the job for a short period while the wetting machine only allows a small amount of current to energize the arc to get it to start, but not enough to instantly heat both the tungsten and the work enough so they stick together. Towards the end of the video you will see how I use my scratch dart TIG. I am using the Yes Welder 205DS. It is a 200 amp machine with an excellent duty cycle in all of its three processes of MIG, TIG and stick. I have written a review on my website weldingempire.com and I will be posting a review here on YouTube soon. If you want to check out more I have an affiliate link in the description below. Use my coupon code weldingempire in the checkout and you will get 10% off the entire cart value. It's a great little machine and I will be using it in a number of my projects. If you're into this sort of thing, please subscribe to my channel. By clicking the bell next to the subscribe button, you'll be notified of my latest videos. I'm using a number 17 torch. This is the rating of how many amps the torch can handle. This is good for 150 amps. I'm using a 332nd or 2.4mm 2% lanthanated tungsten. If you're new to TIG and aren't sure of the right tungsten to buy, I recommend these. You can weld DC and AC with them and the 332nd or 2.4mm size can handle low amperage. I have the gas flow rate at 20 cubic feet an hour or 9.5 litres per minute. I cycle my machine to the lift TIG function. Remember TIG welding makes the earth a positive place aka positive ground negative handpiece. From the early example this, to start the arc I have the ceramic touching the workpiece Simply rock the torch so the tungsten comes into contact and then in one swift motion lift the TIG off the work slightly and have the torch at 10 to 15 degrees. If you've got that sorted, congratulations, you can now lift TIG. But how do you stop? If you pull away quickly, like this example here, you will get what is called a pinhole. This is a major stress point in the weld and it can lead to cracking. If your pipe contains liquid or gas, it may leak. To avoid pinholes, the next step is called tailing off. When you have finished your weld, lean the torch over and increase your travel speed. This decreases the penetration of the puddle by directing the arc towards the surface of the work and with a flick of the wrist, pull away quickly. As you can see from the example, there is no pinhole. This way of extinguishing the arc is used on both lift TIG and scratch tart. Now I'll show you both tips in a weld on my bar table project. I have a build series on the project showing you easy ways to fabricate and weld stainless steel. I have plans for sale on my site. Lift TIG is perfect for this job. I'm polishing out all the welds. You don't need an expensive high frequency machine for a project like this. If you're wondering, I'm using the ESAB Sentinel for welding and you are looking through the Lincoln 3350 4C welding helmet. They're both excellent hoods and I'll link to the reviews I've done in the description below. I've added another angle of the weld to show the process. Lift TIG is a great way to learn TIG welding. I might be showing my age here, but when I started welding, all of the welders I used were scratched up. This was procedure type welding of pharmaceutical thin wall stainless steel to pressure vessels or gas or steam pipes. They were all x-ray tested, so don't think you need a high frequency AC DC machine to get good quality welds. But you do need to plan your welds out more because you need to tail off. For this reason, I highly recommend learning to TIG weld with both hands. Trust me, you'll be glad you did. Let me know in the comments below if you'd be interested in a foot pedal to shut the arc off and turn the gas on and off instead of the valve. I'll design it and do a build video. Cheers guys. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you found it helpful, please give me a like. It helps the video get exposed to more people on YouTube.